Hi everyone, I'm Zoe Barlow and this is my channel Unicorns and Board Games. Today I want to have a closer look at one of the games that I picked up this year at the UK Games Expo. This game won both the People's Choice and the Judges Award for Best Game in the Euro category and that is Earth by Maxime Tardif and Inside Up Games. Before I tell you what I think about the game, let's have a little look at the components and I'll tell you a bit about how the game plays. So this is Earth. It's a one to five play game. According to the box, it plays in 45 to 90 minutes. I'd say that's that's pretty accurate from my experience with this game so far. Um, in this video, first thing I'm going to do is go over basic setup with you so that you know how to set up your, your first game ready to play. Um, I'll give you a bit of an overview of the turns and the various different actions that are available to you on your turns. We'll have a bit of a closer look at the components and of course we'll have a look at the cards, the uh, well, the main thing in the game. Because in Earth you're, you're placing cards to build your own 4x4 four four tableau. We'll have a look at the different the different types of cards and the various different iconography that appears on the cards and on the board in the game because once you've got the iconography sorted you'll you'll know how to play so hopefully by the end of this review you'll have a really good idea of how to play earth first thing we're going to do is place the fauna board in the center of the table notice that it's double-sided they recommend that you start with this for a beginner game though i think especially if you're used to this kind of games it's fine to go ahead and start on this one the scoring's a little different and there's space for some extra cards on this one some ecosystem cards um this is maybe a little bit more friendly because the scoring's the same for um, scoring these. I'm going to go ahead and score and set up on on this side um, to start with. But if you fancy a bit more of a friendly game, set up on the beginner side. We're going to take these brown cards. These are called um, fauna cards, and randomly place out four of them on these spaces here. These will be your in-game objectives notice that all the cards are double-sided so loads of variety in this game um, so during the game you're working towards scoring these you want to be the first person to score them because first person gets 15 points second gets 11 and so on um, they all have various different things and they'll be completely different in every game that you're working towards so just for an example this barn owl will give you um, what wants you to um, have three or more flora that have animal in their names. Flora is another type of card that we'll have a look at in a mo. Um, so that's quite an interesting one. And they all have various different abilities on them, different objectives on them rather. We also want to play out two cards in these spaces here. We'll play out these green um, cards. These are ecosystem cards and these are end game scoring cards. So for example, the Rocky Mountains is quite a, um, a thematic one. The Rocky Mountains, at the end of the game, you'll get three victory points for every two rocky terrains. That's what this one is here, so the rocky terrains. You'll get three for those. So that's the, um, the, the first thing we need to do setting up this, because these are the objectives. So everybody will know what they're working towards during the game. And then next we'll do individual setup. Everybody gets one of these boards in front of them. Everybody gets dealt an island card, a climate card and an ecosystem card, just like the ones we saw down there. These are all double sided. So you get to choose which sides you want to use and you place them down on your board in the spot indicated. Um, I'll go through with you what all the different icons and text mean a little later. Each person also gets their leaf tokens, which you pop down on here. You get five of them. These four here are for scoring the four objectives, uh, objectives up there during the game. And the fifth one is for keeping track of which turn is being played. Um, during setup, of course, you want to put some of the different resources out so they're available to everybody, the uh, growth, 
canopy sprout and soil tokens need to be within reach we've got uh, first player and active player tokens to use and shuffle um your earth cards and put a deck of those within reach there's loads of these in the game so i've just took one pile to pop out to use for this um but there you go and that is set up let's have a little bit of a closer look at this board and so that i can explain some of the icons to you first let's have a look at some of the cards that we've put out here so i can show you um what these mean so the island and the climate cards have um, symbols across the top which are the habitats we have um, sunny wet there's also rocky and cold and the cards that you collect in the game the flora cards will also have these um, this symbol here is the the victory points that the cards are worth at the end of the game so you do start off with some victory points in play um, and your island card has in this dark background here it has your starting resources so you can see this one um, gives you four cards this is a symbol for drawing cards um, and it gives you four soil to start off this symbol here is for composting um, so to start with you you might not get to keep all four of the cards if i just give you an example on a different card if we would pick this one um, you'd draw six cards but then have to compost two so you'd essentially only start with four cards but we started with this one so we get four cards in hand non-composted this is our compost here um, and you can see that the symbol there is the hand so that means we compost them from our hand into this space here face down and we'll have four um, soil so we'll take some soil and pop it here this is where we keep the soil during the game so we've got four to start with there so that's your island card it also has um, different abilities and these might be in different colors here that relate to the different actions climate card very similar um, obviously without the starting resource on has actions um, that activate throughout the game and they might be different colored actions or they might be like with uh, this one um, have an action for different colors um, and they'll all do various different things that relate to um, the turn actions and of course this is just like the um, ecosystem cards we saw for the fauna board at the start um, this is your personal objective you're working towards so this is the redwood Na national park it's another one that's quite thematic because this is going to give you three points for every flora card that you have in your tableau that has three or more growth on it this is the symbol for growth and i'll talk you through that in a mo as well on our board we have two other sections i already told you this one is where we put our compost this one here is where we'll play event cards um, so these will be played face down into these piles and they have different things that you can do with them in the game as well as scoring abilities you can also spend them just like your resources to do different things at the bottom of the board down here we've got this uh, reference for what the, the various different symbols mean so the resources um, and the symbols for them that will appear on your cards um, with a really basic overview of, of what they mean so for your your opening hand you know you can always check like oh what, what does this this mean most of them are really self-explanatory i think a lot of board gamers if you saw this you just know what it means um, but you can always refer down here so this is the draw a card um, symbol draw a card into your hand so all of them it will tell you the resource what what you actually have to do with the resource and where it's played um, and it'll also give you a bit of a reference to um, remind you what the different um, scoring options are at the end of the game it really is a very sort of point salad type game lots of different opportunities for scoring and um, so i talked about compost so here you go your um, compost you'll get one point per card that's played into here lots of different options but i find it really useful to have this um, reference at the bottom here um, especially in the first few games as you're drawing your cards if you're not sure what they're doing you can refer down to here for a reminder 
and across the top of the board are the various different actions that you will get to choose from on your turn. Um, each action is coloured, so you can see we've got green actions which relate to green abilities on your cards, orange actions, blue actions and yellow actions as well. You can see that these three have um, symbols on them that denote all three of those actions as well. Um, so the, the top row is um, what the active player will get to do, which is this symbol here. So the active player will choose one of those that they want to do and everybody else will get to do what's in this second row here, which is similar to what's in the top, but, but not as good. Um, so it's one of the things I really love about this game is that there's very, very little, if any at all, downtime because everybody is getting to do something on everybody's turn. So the active player um, and the active player marker will rotate clockwise, will take it in turns to choose which one they want to do with everybody doing um, the follow up action as well. Um, and they can choose these actions in any order um, or they can take, you know, the same action over and over again. It's not like games like uh, Scythe, for example, where you, you have to do one and then do another one. You, you, you can do any of them in any order and as many as you like in a row. Um, so you take the action. Everybody else takes the action and then you also trigger all of the actions on your cards, which will be your cards on your player board and also cards that are played out into your tableau, which I'll show you in a, in a moment. So let's have a look at the green action here. This symbol here is for planting. You'll plant two cards, which is essentially taking a card out of your hand um, and playing it into your tableau. Um, so let's have a look at some of these cards. Um, in the deck, there are various different types of cards, and one of them is these green cards. It's the one you'll see the most of. These are flora. Um, you'll pay the amount here. This is the cost, and play it out where you want it in your 4x4 four four tableau. And um, once they're played, you can't move them. So some of them there might be um, there might be a reason why you choose to play it in a certain place. So you think about that. Um, just like the climate and the island cards, we've we've got the various different um, habitats across the top here. Um, the flora cards also are um, like different types. We've got trees, uh, herbs, mushrooms and bushes. This here, um, as I've already said, is the victory points. We've got spaces on some of them for sprouts spaces on some of them for growth and also abilities. This one here has an ability that activates for any of the actions. So blue, yellow and orange will all activate this. Um, and some of them will be, um, like we can see here, just one colour activation. Um, so we'll pay the amount to pretend we've got enough soil for it and place it down. Um, and you can do that twice <clears throat> on this action. Um, so there's lots of different flora cards that you can play um, and they've all got different icons on for different things. They're all different habitats, different types, different amount of uh, sprouts, different amount of growth, different actions that activate um, for the you know the different things and they all have really lovely art except for this one god i really, really hate that piece of art i can't explain why it just makes me feel like vomiting so we'll hide that one but most of them have as you can see really really beautiful um photos on them um and they've all got a little bit of flavor text at the bottom which i'll be honest i've, I've never actually read during a game and um, so these are the kind of cards that you'll draw out of the earth deck other types of cards that are on the earth deck are these terrain cards which can also be played in your tableau um, during the green action so you've got different types of terrain um, that do different things the main thing that terrain cards will do is provide you end game scoring so you can see for this one three points for a card with um, a score of 
four or more on that one um, but some of them will have different things as well so this dark background here just like your starting hand is just some some resources that you'll have access to some will have um actions on again that relate to these uh, actions up here um yeah but most of them are scoring ones so the river will give you two points for every blue action card in one player's area um there's loads of different types of them and again with this really nice photography as well so you'll be drawing flora cards and terrain cards and be able to play them down as I said, you can play up to two here, as long as you can afford the cost, which we're very unlikely to be able to play a nine and a seven out of or whatever. Um, as long as you can afford the cost, you're playing them down um, into your tableau. As so um, just whilst we're on this particular one here, because there is another action on it where you draw four cards off the deck and get to keep one. I'll go through the other type of cards that are in the Earth deck. So there's three types, um, the flora cards, the terrain cards, there are also event cards. Now, these cards, you don't need to plant them because they don't go into your tableau. These event cards come down here and get played here. And these are just sort of um, one time activation things that happen, kind of like the events in um, Terraforming Mars, for example. Um, and these can be played at any time. Actually, they don't have to be played during that. Um, and they all have uh, victory points some might have minus victory points and they all have an instant thing that you do um, for, for your resources they tend to be weather or uh, you know like um, uh, astrological things that, that happen um, yeah they give you resources victory points or minus victory points so that's the different types of cards um, so Plant two, draw four and keep one, whilst everybody else will get to plant one and draw one card. Once you've done that action, you then trigger all actions that are in green. There's very few in green, actually, in the game. Some of the, the island cards have them on, so you'd see we'd then get to... Um, to do this actually this isn't one that, that triggers like that this would give us two soil for every yellow that was played and as soon as we've played this one that's got a yellow here we'd get to take um two soil um for, for playing that so we'd have an extra two soil from that um, but any other green ones um that you might already have out in your tableau would trigger at this point as well the orange ability here is a very simple one so plus five soil so you just take um, five soil from the supply and get to keep it and it also this symbol here remembers the compost so we get to compost two cards but this time not from our hand this is from the deck so we just draw the top two earth cards from the deck we don't look at them and we place them here in our compost and these cards here can be used later on in the game um, to activate different um, actions as well everybody else will get to just take two or compost too so again it's it's the same but not as good and then all of the orange actions or um, multicolored actions will trigger so you can see i've played a few more out to show you so we'll do um, any orange ones on our player board first which we don't have and then we'll activate them in um, order starting from the first one here so we'll do this one here and um, that's to spend a sprout to get an extra soil we don't have any sprouts here um, so we can't do that um, and then here we do this one next um, and this is remember this is composting from our hand so we'd um, get to do two composts from our hand into our compost pile if we wanted to you don't have to activate them all and that's what would happen on the orange activation the blue action here is um, sprouts, so I get to show you this now. So the active player will get to take six sprouts and play them where they want to, where there's space. So this wisteria here has lots of space that I could just chuck all six on at once. Um, 
there's lots of reasons why you might choose to actually play and um, to spread them around a bit um, depending on what different types of cards you've got um, and these can be spent for different things so like this this action we could have took on the orange one here as well as doing the six sprouts you get to take an extra two soil to go in your um it says down here um, and everybody else two sprouts or two soil we then activate all the different blue actions this one that we've got here you can see um this says um if you chose the blue action so some of these um on the climate cards will say that so these blue ones don't trigger on every player's turn they only trigger if you choose the blue action so here we get to draw two cards up here we get to do this one next and we can spend one of these sprouts if we want to to get an extra soil um, and then we have no more blue actions but we'd continue to do all of the blue actions in our tableau as would everybody else around the table and finally the yellow action firstly allows us to draw four cards and then we can do two growth so these are the, the trunk resources this is what we use to um, show growth and we can play these down on anywhere where there is um, a growth space if i just show you um, this one a bit closer up so you can see this this green circle here is where we we put the growth the the trunk with the canopies on top that i'll show you in a moment um, this has a maximum growth of two and this here you can see it's in that little leaf shape just like the, the victory points this is how many victory points that this will score if it has achieved its maximum growth so this one can have two on but because two is its maximum instead of putting this on we'll go straight ahead and finish it off with a canopy and that's the the two growth from our yellow turn you don't have to play it all on one card so we could have opted to um, spread it out and put one there and, and one there um, and there's different reasons why just like with the the sprouts why you choose to spread it out um, so we get to do that draw four um, do two growth everybody else gets to either draw two or do two growth and then we trigger all of the yellow abilities on the different cards, just like with the others. Um, I'll just show you this one here because it's a bit of a different one. You can see the yellow ones tend to be geared towards growth. And this is where it's um, important where you choose to play stuff in your tableau, because this one says that I can have um, an a growth on each of this particular type of flora, the herb in this row so these here are di directional um the arrows indicating where you want it and some of them are in a row some of them are in a column some are, are diagonal um, and there's various different scoring as well on the ecosystem and also on the fauna cards that we played out that are relating to directional as well whether that be orthogonal or diagonal but in this case it's to do with our growth so you can see where i've chose to play this card actually isn't optimum for this because this uh, wisteria isn't the type of um, flora card that we need for this but this would go ahead um, when this is triggered and play a, um, a growth on itself but if I'd managed to have a whole row in my tableau of this type of card I'd be able to keep triggering that every time I took the yellow action and um, so you can see it it, it, it does um, it does have a real engine building element to it where you can be really purposeful in which actions you take, where you place your cards and, and what your different cards do to, to how they trigger and how the whole thing um, can, can sort of play for you. And when it all, um, you know, kicks off exactly how you plan it to and you'll be able to oh, I'll put a sprout on there and on there and on there and then I'll be able to do this and this and this and scoring all over the place um it's really really satisfying to see your your engine unfold as you have planned play continues with the 
active player token passing clockwise um, around the table with everybody taking it in turns to choose which action they want to do on their turn everybody else doing the secondary action and then those abilities on everybody's tableau triggering and that continues as this goes around the table until somebody plays their 16th and final card into their tableau at that point everybody gets to have a final turn up to the the start player for that um for that turn to make sure everybody has equal number of turns um, and then we go to scoring but something to remember whilst you are playing is of course we have our fauna cards up at the top that we played out at the start and we want to be making sure during play that we're trying to work towards some of these so for example during this game if i played out the venus fly trap or the parrot wax cap i would be able to go ahead and place one of my leaf tokens up on the fauna board in the first available scoring space for that card and also there is the um ecosystem cards that are up on the fauna board with the end game scoring so we want to be making sure we're um keeping an eye on those as well as our own um ecosystem card um, we'll have various different things that we might have played into our tableau via the terrain cards that might be scoring us points so we'll be mindful of that as we're playing um, and then when that 16th card is played into somebody's tableau they'll get the seven points as you'll see that on the the fauna board um, seven points for being the first person to do that and we'll then go through to scoring Scoring's really easy in this game because it comes with one of these nice little um, score books. I really don't like it when games that have these point salad style scoring don't have one of these in. It just makes it so much easier. So you can track it here. And also remember, you've got your reference down here. So the first thing you score is the base victory points in your tableau. So that's um, these here. You add up all of these, including any that are over here as well from your climate and your island cards. Then you've got your victory points from the event cards over here. So you might have some um, minus points. Some might give you plus, but you're probably going to have a minus um, for that one. The events tend to be um, negatives. Then you've got points per card in your compost you might end up having quite a uh, a deck in your compost at the end so tot all of those up and that goes here and then one victory point per sprout that you've got left if you'd not spent them you might have just been holding on to them for scoring then you've got victory points for your growth either um, you'll add up um, how many of of uh, these trunks you've got or for ones where you've popped a canopy on um, they'll score the points that are here so this one instead of just scoring three because I've got three of the the trunks um, I'll score four for that um, then you've got your victory points from your terrain cards so have a look what um, what the scoring for those are that will go there victory points from the ecosystems you've got your personal one here the shared ones up there so you'll add those up and then lastly the victory points for the uh, fauna board at the top so you'll add up how many points you scored for your leafs that were played up there and pop that there and that will give you your total at the end of the game I really, really enjoyed this game. Um, I played it a, a few times now since um, since Games Expo, and 
every single time that I've played it, it has been different to every other time. The variety in this game is, is huge because there's so many different things that um, that can change. You've got the fauna cards in, in the centre that you're working towards throughout the game and, you know, trying to be the, the first person to score on those to get the most points for them. Then you've got the, the green cards on the side, the, uh, the eco cards that you're working towards for the end game scoring, which, of course, you then have your own one of those as well that you're working towards and as well as that there's the um the terrain cards that you're playing down into your island um and they're going to change your choices about um you know what you place and where you place stuff and it changes in every single game um and the, the different varieties of scoring, the different things that you're working towards, they really differ as well. You know, you might be trying to, to do loads of composting. You might be trying to get certain types of plants in, in your island. Or um, there's a lot of objectives that score based on the positioning of the cards. So for things being orthogonally or diagonally adjacent or being in, you know, straight um, lines and that can be a really sort of a brain tester trying to make sure that you're placing cards so that you can join them up and connect them and um, there might be cards where you're trying to get the same things in rows or columns or different things in rows or columns and what you've got in your hand and on your board might be completely conflicting to what's out in the central board as well um, so there's just so much variety and so much to think think about um, and it's exactly the kind of thing that I like in a game where you know it's really a, a puzzle that needs solving in trying to figure out how am I going to meet all of these objectives um, to score you know the optimum scoring for it and then trying to get your engine to work as well it's my one of my favourite mechanics in games is, is engine building, building up your own engine, you know, so that when it triggers and when it all unfolds, I'm, I'm going to do the blue action and I'm going to do this, but then this is going to happen, which causes this to happen, then this to happen, then this to happen, and everything just comes together. Um, it's one of the things I, I, I love in, in any game like this where there is engine building, but it works so well in this because there's so many different opportunities um, and variety of, of circumstances to change how your engine will will work and, and what the outcome of that engine is going to be, meaning that every game of it is, is different and every game of it you play in a different way. I've not played it enough yet to see whether there is like a, an optimum way of winning, but I really can't see that that would be a thing with this game because it's 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 just so different on on each playthrough of it maybe there is one way that actually you're you, you're going to be um more likely to score more i don't know through through growth or through the little sprouties or or, or whatever um but actually it seems that because there's so much stuff that you can do you can't do it all um a much like games that it's com been compared to, Wingspan, um, there's so many different things going on. You can't do all of them. You've got to figure out which one of all of these different things, which one's best for what you're trying to accomplish um, and try and max out your score for that. Um, but, but also, you know, you might just be picking the ones that are the ones that you enjoy to do. So Terraforming Mars, for example, another game that this has been compared to. Um, I particularly like doing the microbe stuff in it, whether it's, you know, going to get me a lot of victory points or not. It's something I'll always opt to do because I, I like the, I think it's because of the nice little cubes, you know, I, I like doing the thing that means, oh, now I've done that, I get to put another microbe on here and I get to put um, one on this one as well. And, you know, it's about triggering that engine. Same thing with this, you, you're, you're able to, to choose which part of the game you enjoy the most and throw yourself into that. So mechanic wise, I really, really do love it. Theme wise, it's a lovely theme and it's it's very well done. You know, it has this really nice um, photography on the cards and, and all of the ways in which the different things play, they, they fit into the theme. But for me, the theme just doesn't come through at all. And I'm not saying that, that that's a bad thing. I think because I'm so 
overwhelmed by the mechanics. The mechanics are so perfect for me that the theme doesn't get a chance to shine in this. It is all about building my engine. It's it's placed in little cubes and, and cards and I'm not really thinking about what's actually going on. Um, last night when I played it, I realised at the end of it that I, I had no idea what had gone on on my island. I, some of the cards as I'd um, played them, I'd clocked what they were because they had pretty photographs on. So you know, one was a lovely photograph of some wisteria. I, I knew I'd played that. But I didn't know what choices I'd made for, you know, my ecosystem and the terrains. And I hadn't paid attention to the theme at all because I was so engrossed in the mechanics and in making the engine work. Um, and I do love it when a game has a really strong theme, when a, a theme really shines through and you can watch it and, and understand how the game mechanics relate to the theme. But actually... In this game, I, I don't mind that the theme's not so strong there. And I know some people will completely disagree with me and think that actually, yeah, it is really thematic. For me, not so much. Um, I, I think this could easily be any number of different themes could be pasted onto this. Um, and I would enjoy it just the same. Because the thing for me in this that I enjoy, it is, it's those mechanics, it's the strategy, it's the engine building. Um, the component quality is lovely. As I said, it's got really nice photography. Usually I don't really like it when photography is used in games in um, we'll go with Terraforming Mars again, as I just talked about, and it's what it's compared to that the photographs um, and the sort of stock imagery that's used in that I really don't like. It's it's not done in a it's not done well. There's no um, consistency to the art style. But in this, the photographs it makes sense that they're photographs and they're very nice photographs. Each photograph is, is like a, you know, a work of art. They're all really beautiful um, photos, beautiful photography. Um, and, it, and it does work with the theme. Um, the cards, I, I, one thing I'd clocked when first playing, the card stuff doesn't seem so nice. It's not, um, you know, linen finish, though I feel like I read somewhere that that was um, a, an active decision from the designer to not have linen finish because it's photography, which I guess is true. You know, photographs don't really work as well on linen finish as, um, you know, something like Wingspan where it's um, sort of watercolour painting style and it looks very nice on linen finish. So so I get that that choice for it. Um, the little wooden bits that you're growing, you know, they're, they're nice, they stack. Um, there's nothing particularly extra special about the components in this game. Um, but, you know, if if there was, if this was a game that had been super pimped out with really high quality components, the price point of the game would have been a lot higher. One of the things that I think will draw a lot of people to this game is that actually it's really reasonably priced for such a big weighty game. If you compare this to games similar to it that, that play like this, they are all a, a quite a, a sizable amount more expensive than this. Um, I think I picked this up for just a little bit over um, 40 quid. I think it was 44 pounds. Um, and I think that's really, really reasonable price for a game of of this of this weight um, that has this much playability. I always think about playability when I think about the cost of games. You know, a, a game you're, you're kind of equated to, to how many hours you're going to get to, to play it on the table, how many people you're going to go, you're going to play it with, um, and and what you're actually getting out of it. If you you know if you think of a game like an experience, like how much would I pay to go to um, a theme park or or go to the cinema or something like that? With a game, you're you're playing per experience for it. I think price wise, this was so reasonable. Um, that actually I, I don't expect more from the components for it. Yes, there's lots of stuff they could have done to really make it spectacular in component quality, like a, a lot of games are choosing to do. But that would have unnecessarily driven the cost up and its um, its footprint as well or, or whatever. You know, the game is, is called Earth. It's about ecosystems and the environment. So I, I think maybe the decisions to to not do a whole bunch of that pimping out 
it's also a little bit more eco-friendly and something maybe more companies should start thinking about with their game production as well you know is it or is all of this this plastic necessary in our game experience um some games yeah of course it is i mean you can see my game collection behind me on the shelf i do have a lot of big beastie games with lots of plastic and lots of pieces um and i do love games that have really high component quality but sometimes i think especially with big kickstarters where it's all about the stretch goals and more and more stuff is it necessary and do we need to spend that much on the games as well? I did really appreciate that this was um, such a reasonable price. Um, it plays very well with all different player counts. So far, I've played it at two, three and four player um, and I've loved it at, at all. I, I did think that maybe it wouldn't be as good at two player having first played it at four but but actually it works really well as a, a two-player game as well and and it plays in quite a reasonable amount of time once you've got that initial learn out the way and you know what you're doing um we we had a game wrapped up in a little under an hour maybe playing it the other day um yeah there's so much that I could say about this game. I could keep talking about how much I love it. It's really, really fantastic. Yes, it does have some similarities to other games out there. Other games out there that are in my top 10 games, my favourite game of all time I've spoke about before is Terraforming Mars. And it does have similarities, but not so much that, um, you know, it, it, it erases them. I've heard people saying that a lot when Ark Nova come out. Oh, I'll never play Terraforming Mars again. This this erases Terraforming Mars. And people said this about Earth. Oh, Earth will come out and you won't need those other games. I think they, they all still have um, a valid spot in my game collection and I'll still get all of them to the table. It's, it's enough of a unique game in the combination of mechanics that it, it stands on its own two feet. Yeah, there's similarities, but there's so many games that are out and, and coming out every year there's going to be similarities um i don't think it's that similar at all um people have compared it a lot with arc nova and i i, I don't really see how it's it's that similar i think the closest one for me that i would compare it to um is, is wingspan i i found it useful thinking about wingspan when I was learning to play it in understanding how some of the cards work thinking about the um, sprouts as being eggs and thinking of the compost as being and the mechanic of, of tucking in in wingspan um, but it's still vastly different to it there's, there's so much um, going on in this game that's different to other games that yeah it stands on its own two feet it's its own game um, and I really really enjoy it definitely recommend it um, and that is Earth again by Maxime Tardif and Inside Out Games. I hope you have enjoyed this video, I hope you found it to be informative. If you did enjoy it give us some likes, maybe consider subscribing to my channel. Um, I hope to have a whole bunch more contact content coming out soon in the upcoming weeks. I bought a load more uh, new games at Games Expo that I intend to review and I want to take a look back at some of my old favourites and review those as well. Thank you very much for watching today. Bye folks.